Hello, everybody. <clears throat> oh, gross. Sorry. Uh, can I get some thumbs up if you can hear me cr like fine? I have a little setup here and I'm a little nervous that I screwed something up. So um, there's a little delay. So you're not going to be hearing this for a little bit. But I want to know if y'all can hear me. And if you can, then we'll get started. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see all your names in the chat and all of these amazing people that I remember and I see on my channel all the time. Thanks for coming to this live. Okay. Hi, friends. Um, I'm guessing most of us are in here because we are also struggling with these dang mites, which is, y'all, it's a battle. It is, and it is not for the faint of heart. I tell you what. Okay, I'm seeing the thumbs up now. <laughs> This delay, it's wild. But anyway, I haven't went live in so long, mostly due to the computer that I had couldn't really handle the type of lives I would like to do with my DSLR camera. And partly just because, uh, I don't know, it's always a little scary going live. But I'm hoping to do this more, a little mix of content of live streams and possibly in edited videos like always. But... I feel like these live streams give me a chance to like talk with you guys like together at the same time. And I really enjoy that. So I'm hoping to get back into it and I hope you guys enjoy it too. But today I wanted to do a live stream so we could talk about flat mites, which are these mites that have been infesting Hoya. I think all over the world. I think this is something that a lot of people deal with or have currently they didn't know that they had and more and more information is coming out about them so that's been really great but also you know it's throwing people into despair because they're not fun to deal with and they're not fun to eradicate so um hi nicole hi becca thank you for joining hi everyone it's so nice to see all your faces on well your picture, if you have one, but also your names. Anyway, um, if you have listened to my podcast with Becca and Nicole, Potted Together podcast, you'll know that I've been screaming about these mites for what feels like years. <laughs> and it really has been years. I first found them in October of 2020 on my plants. And wow, I did not know what I was in for. And uh it's been, a, it's been a struggle. It has. I've lost a lot of Hoya. I've chosen to take cuttings of a lot of Hoya and throw, um, and throw them out. And I know that that's not a popular opinion, but, you know, it's, it's my collection. They're my plants, and I'm not going to give somebody an infested plant. But anyway, when I first found these mites, I think I was talking about them on the podcast all the time. And I felt like I was screaming into the void constantly little fun toys I have um, and there just wasn't much information about them and I was resulting to going to some orchid growers because there was something called a false mite that I think is either synonymous or closely related to the flat mite um, and I was trying to get some tips from them because it seems like orchid growers have known about this for a long time also Swedish Hoya people knew about it for a long time and I feel like it was just finally when the Hoya craze reached its pinnacle and everyone was just buying Hoya all the time and they still are. Um, I think now a lot of people in the U S 
have uh, been dealing with them. So <clears throat> before we get started, I'm going to talk about the whole process of me finding them and what I've been doing. But there is going to be a Q&A section at the end, and you'll see the graphic come up on the screen. So if you have questions, um, you know, save them till then. I'm, it's really hard for me to watch the chat and also try to connect with you all by looking at the the camera. So I'm not I'm gonna glance over at the chat every once in a while, but yeah, questions will come, so don't don't fret about that. Uh, if you follow me on IG or if you haven't, go follow me on Instagram because that's kind of where I was posting a lot about this might stuff. And I know not everyone has Instagram, but um, they. That's where I was kind of screaming into the void. I was doing it on the podcast. And yeah, anywho, I thought I would take you on my journey first with the flat mites by showing you a little presentation. Uh, I am going to have to look at the computer here. But this photo right here was the first photo where I found the mites back in October of 2020. I woke up one Monday morning and I was like, oh, I'm going to do a cute little macro Monday on my Instagram. I used to do that quite often. However, uh, I haven't done it in a bit. But while I was taking my macro lens on my phone and going around and trying to take photos of plants, there was this particular plant that was getting hit with direct sun from my east window. It was early morning. So um, that plant had these like reddish dots on it. And you can see it here. Um, but even with the macro lens, it was like really difficult to figure out what they were. Uh, but, and this image right here, I wish I had like, I wish I had like a sports caster so I could circle it, but you can definitely see a mite hanging off to the left there. And then also some eggs, um, that are bright orange, but that's what I kept seeing. I kept seeing these specks of red on my plants and I was like, what is this? And usually with these mites, um, the telltale sign that you have them is your Hoyas aren't growing. And Hoya, for me at least, and I promise it's not a, a subtle brag, but my Hoya grow really well. And even with these mites that were on this particular plant that you see right here, uh, that Hoya was growing well. Now, I have realized that I was probably hyper -fer or over fertilizing my plants, and I still am because, you know, I didn't see any adverse effects and they're all growing. So maybe that extra like strength was letting them power through these little bastards. <laughs> I don't know, but, um, they were still growing, but every once in a while I would notice that like a new leaf would fall off and it was happening to plants that that didn't happen to before. So I was like, okay, something's afoot here. Something is going on with these Hoya. Then I see this on the, Hoya here in this picture and I was like oh that can't be good um these mites do not weave webs so and you can't see them I geez I'm all over the place here uh with the mites you can't see them with your naked eye this photo right here is from a macro lens but that's still just a 10 times macro lens and I honestly think that you need more than that if you want to try to see these there are jewelers loops out there there's magnifying glasses, but 10x seems like a little on the low side. So you want to, um, you really want to get like a higher magnification. But anyway, you can't see them with your eyes. They don't make webs. The point that you know you have these mites is probably the point where it's just overrunning everything. And it's just, it's disheartening to say the least. Oh my gosh. I didn't even talk about what I'm having a sip of. <laughs> um, I haven't, in the last few videos, I haven't brought out a drink, mostly because I don't drink a lot anymore. But today I decided to bring out this uh, Añejo Tequila by the brand Coralejo. And I know I usually drink bourbon or whiskey, but you know, this tequila was aged in a bourbon barrel, so it counts. And it's delicious. Uh, but tequila always reminds me of high school mistakes, so <laughs> it's a tough one. That aftertaste. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Where was I with the mites? Um, you can't see them. They don't make webs. When you finally realize you have them, it's probably detrimental. So, yeah. Um, so this was my first contact with the mites on this picture. And going through all these photos in my camera roll was like a walk down memory lane of like how long I've been dealing with these. Um, 
And then I was looking at other Macro Monday photos because I was like, okay, well, I took a lot of macro photos of my Hoya and I... I just assumed that I would, now that I have all this knowledge and how to spot them, that I would find them on plants. And yeah, you can see, you can kind of see a speck on that leaf right there. This is a Hoya macrophylla outer variegated, well, reclassified as latifolia. But there is a mite just, you know, chilling on that leaf, unbeknownst to me, while I was taking this cute little photo of like, oh, look at my fun new leaf. Anyway, I thought that was funny to include because that just shows how ignorant I was. Um, the next photo shows sort of what I have referred to as knobby or stubby growth. This right here is a telltale sign again that you have mites. If you have a Hoya that is constantly trying to put out a new growth point, and then it scabs over, hardens up, creates a lump, and then it just repeats the process over and over again. And this is my Hoya Rang San, which unfortunately is no longer with me. I just like, I couldn't mentally do it anymore. But this one was really badly infested. And you can see the LECA in this image has a residue on it. Because when I first noticed these mites, I was treating with rubbing alcohol and water mixture. And... I was like, well, let me add some Castile soap into this mix because I thought that that would be even better. And it was good, but you can tell the LECA was covered with that Castile soap and it kind of turned it hydrophobic, which means it wouldn't really wick up water. When I would rinse through the LECA, you could just see the water bubbling up on that little those spots and um, kind of going away. And I was like, well, this isn't good because the whole point of LECA is to wick water or nutrients up through the LECA to nourish the plant. So I stopped with the Castile soap. I actually stopped with all that. But this was after I had treated this plant with Castile soap and alcohol and water for a while. And you can see, and it's wild, but you can see all of those growth points starting to grow again. I mean, it was like, it's mutant. Like you can see every bit of one of those growth points is trying to put out a new vine. Um, I wasn't able to save this plant and a lot of that's just due to my neglect on how I treated them. Uh, and we'll talk about that more later up when I come to the treatment. But if you see knobby growth on your Hoya like this, chances are you got the mites and I'm sorry you got the mites, but it's better to know than to just remain ignorant and, and have your Hoyas just suffer and not grow. Um, these mites, and sometimes, you're, like I said earlier, your Hoya do grow, but these mites, when they bite into the plant material, they kind of inject a sort of poison into it that kind of uh, stops it from growing or doing all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, they're no fun. Um, and this next one is from my microscope. So you can see I have a little video here, and you can see this little bastard's crawling around. Oh, this gives me the heebie-jeebies every time, so I'm sorry that, that I'm showing this. And... The, the video quality is not very great because, again, it's from a handheld microscope that's, like, really kind of difficult to hold still. But the, the mite's MO is to always be around new growth, always in the area where you have a new vine coming out or at the growing tips, which is why the Swedish Hoya people kind of referred to this mite as a top shoot mite, meaning it really likes to hang around the top. So... Um, you can see them all hanging out there, just having a good old time on that new growth point, just like biting and injecting their poison and yeah, not fun. Um, and then this next image shows a little bit of how the mites look under the microscope again. Again, it's not the most clear picture, but you can definitely tell there's mites there. This is a whole little family just setting up shop on my Hoya. You got the dad up here trying to wrangle the kids around at the top and the mom's down below in the kitchen hanging up the live, laugh, love sign. And I, I just don't, it, it was frustrating to see this because I'm just like, uh, you, there's so many different stages of this mite and you can definitely tell the adults, the two adults in this, but, uh, the smaller ones are kind of like the infants and there's even some eggs there and the eggs 
are the really, really tricky part to these mites because the eggs, the whole life cycle of this, this particular mite is so much longer than any other pests or mites that we have to deal with on our plants. It's a 21, almost 21 day life cycle from egg to adult, which means your treatment needs to be consistent and it needs to carry on for multiple weeks. And that's the frustrating part. Um, but they like to lay their eggs in the teeniest, tiniest cracks. Um, I have some images coming up of the cracks, but here is my Hoya Wayetii, uh intervarigated, and you can see all of those little orange particles around that those two brand new leaves growing on that vine. Some of those are toddler mites. Some of those are eggs, but you can definitely tell that there's something there. Um, and then there's some adults there as well. Um, a good first uh, kind of eradication you can do with your plants is you can just blast them with water. So this one, this plant was small enough that I was able to take it to the sink and blast it with our sprayer. Sometimes I do that with my Hoya. When I water, I just shower. Well, it's a good practice to shower your plants, get off the dust so they can photosynthesize and all of that, but um, some of mine are pretty big, so I take them to the spare bathroom and use the shower head. This one I could use the sink sprayer, and this is what it looked like before, and then I sprayed it really good with the water, and this is the same image, and you can no longer see any eggs or adults, but they're probably hiding in other crevices um, there. And it's just kind of funny to see this before and after. Like, I know it's a different angle, but it is the same plant. It was taken on the same day, but that's before the spray and after the spray. I mean, it, it really does help, and it helps kind of knock off a good chunk of the population. Um, but the way that these mites lay their eggs, they bury them. So this is another picture, a very close-up picture of a Hoya. And as you know, our Hoya, when they mature, they get to be woody, and they have these like tiny little cracks that most of the time you can't see with your eyes, but when you get that microscope out, you will see that those eggs are buried into each one of those crevices. So sometimes when you're blasting with water, it doesn't jostle those eggs loose. So I have been known to take a soft bris bristle toothbrush and kind of scrub spray, scrub spray, um, if I see a plant that has a lot of it on there. And... Uh, Yuck. Um, so I have a couple more images here of the eggs. You can see that this image shows a whole new growth point coming off of the Hoya. So up at the top, you kind of see all that, that new vine because it's a little fleshy. It's not woody. And so that's where the growth point, you know, came off the plant to start a new vine. But you can see that the, the crevices all around that growth point are... Uh, covered with eggs <laughs> it's so bad um and i didn't realize how bad it was until i looked back at these photos and i'm like oh boy um and then here's another one you can see there's new growth here at the top where it's more green and um you can see all those eggs kind of around the crevices underneath where that new growth was. Because like I said, the adults really like to hang around the new growth. I don't know if it's because they can sink their teeth in or if they even have teeth. Uh, but they can sink them in a little better to that fleshy new growth material than they can with the woody stuff. Um, but while they're hanging out there chomping on your Hoya, they're laying eggs and, and doing the deed. <clears throat> so... Ugh, frustrating. Okay, so a little bit about what I have done prior to, but I do I do want to share, I'm going to share later the treatment that I would recommend, well, that I am doing for my plants. Maybe maybe it doesn't work for everyone, but it's, it's what I'm doing with my plants. There's lots of different ways to treat these. Um, I'll also, in the description, I have some of the links for the stuff that I use as well as a link for an article about flat mites that was published in a journal or a newsletter called Stemma, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, after Betsy Begonia kind of published a video on these, which I've always pointed people to because everyone wanted me to do a video, but I just, 
those informational only videos, they're just hard for me. And I'd much rather tell you my, my story, my journey with them. And then I would being like, this is what you need to do because, uh, if something happens, I don't want to be responsible. Um, but Betsy mentioned that you could do a hot water bath, which when I had previously researched these mites, I realized a lot of people are doing that with their orchids. Um, and a hot water bath is basically just putting, maintaining, maintaining a temperature between 110 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I honestly would say 110 to 115, but maintaining a temperature and kind of soaking your plant in that water for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and I did this with my beautiful four foot, five foot vine croniana. You can see here, I have a sous vide that I was using to maintain the temperature because that's very important. And a sous vide is a cooking, uh, instrument that will cycle the water and maintain it at the temperature that you set. So that was the best way I could, um, make sure that I was doing things correctly. <clears throat> um, so here she is sitting in the bath. This plant had probably upwards of like 30 peduncles. You can see some of the flowers there. And after this water bath, um, all of the peduncles fell off, which I was kind of expecting anyway. I did have some leaf damage, but it wasn't anything major. I have heard of other people saying that they kind of destroyed their collection by doing this. Um, so if you're going to try the hot water bath, I highly suggest you do it with something you don't love or maybe something you have duplicates of. So if it something should happen to that, because it is a finicky process, then you will have that plant still. So uh, that's my warning. Um, cut to, this was like probably a couple months ago. Uh, cut to now. Oh my gosh. You guys... You guys sent in super chats. Maybe we should do a little dance for the super chats. Let's find some music. Thanks, friends. Okay, that's enough. Um, so, cut to now. This plant still had mites on it. So, I don't know if it was uh, reinfested because it was really hard to seclude this plant. It's, it was a huge vining croniana and I didn't have a space for it. I put it on a shelf kind of away from other plants, but I checked it just this weekend and I found not as bad as it was, but I found some eggs on it. Um, the hard thing with the eggs is you don't, there's really not many insecticides or chemicals that will kill eggs. You need specific ones that specifically kill eggs. I thought the hot, bot hot water bath would do it, and maybe it did, and maybe those eggs were dead, um, but they were still bright orange, so I was like, uh, I felt a little iffy about it. So I took a bunch of cuttings of this one, and this is one of the ones I had to toss, but I'm, I know that it'll grow again. Um, so, yeah, I did the sous vide. I don't know if I would recommend it, the hot water bath. I tried the alcohol, but what has worked for me in this whole area of treating these is sulfur fungicide. And I know that sounds really weird, but this is the one I use. Again, there's a link to this down below. It's by Bonide. And um, it's a powder that I mix in this beautiful little pump action sprayer. And I soak my plants. Um, the reason that I don't know if everyone would really love this, sulfur doesn't, it doesn't smell as bad as I thought. I thought my house was going to smell like rotten egg farts, to be honest, because that's what you think of when you think of sulfur. Uh, it's not that bad. However, it is not the most pleasant smelling thing, but it's not as bad as you, in your mind. It's not as bad as what you're going to think it is. So the way that you treat your plants is you completely coat them. And here is a picture of my Hoya elliptica today. I took this picture today because I treated this one this weekend. I sprayed it completely, coating all surfaces of the plant, stems, backs of the leaves, everywhere I could get the spray. And the key to the sulfur fungicide is to leave it on. And I know, like, yeah, it maybe gives you, like, a cute little splashy Hoya, but <laughs> a fake splash Hoya. Um, but the key to leaving it on is because when those eggs hatch and they crawl through it, it'll kill them. 
So uh, I've heard from many people, especially like the Swedish Hoya Society folks, and they said that it's just it's a it's a good thing to soak your plant with the sulfur fungicide, and then leave it on there. Um, and you have to do your treatments weekly for six weeks. I'm going to say six weeks because of the life cycle of the mites, but um, you can do it more than that. I just think that might be a little bit overkill. Um, but because their life cycle isn't super fast, you know, there is some time between when the eggs hatch to when they become an adult where they can, you know, spawn and lay another egg. Um, so my goal is to separate my collection. So right now I'm treating all of the Hoya in my bedroom and I'm going to do that weekly for six weeks. And then I'm going to move out to some of these, even though most of these are clear, uh, I'm just going to do it just to make sure that we're on a level playing field here. Um, but the sulfur spray, since it's a powder, uh, it does stay on your plant. So this is kind of the vibes you're going to have with your plants for a little while. Um, I will probably rinse these off and then treat them again this weekend. I don't know uh, when, but I got to find some time. Um, the sulfur rinses off pretty easily. Some some of the spots do stick around, but if you just take your little uh, your finger and you just rub it or take a paper towel, it'll come off. So it's not like hot, hard water stains where you have to have some sort of acid or any of that stuff. Um, but so far, the sulfur has been my go-to treatment and after I did it the first time I really noticed like a lot of my Hoya started growing again and that is um that was a tell that was a big sign that I was like okay I'm finally making headway with these things because for the longest time some of my plants that were infested with these just weren't growing and uh after my first sulfur treatment they started growing which made me feel so happy oh my gosh more super chats more dancing i need to get more songs on this <laughs> okay thank you guys for the super chats that's really sweet of you um <clears throat> so i did see a question uh i'm gonna let me add this to the broadcast can you leave the sulfur on for six weeks? Why does it need to be re reapplied? Uh, you definitely can leave it on for six weeks. I don't know. I'm not a, a master at this. Uh, but the sulfur on the leaves like this is going to prevent your plant from photosynthesizing to its you know highest quality because the light is reflecting off of that, those particles. Um, so you probably could do... You could probably rinse it off, but, you know, I don't know. I have left it on for five days so far. I might give it a rinse just so they can breathe for a little bit before I reapply it. Um, but that's completely up to you. Six weeks is a long time for a plant to go without getting the most photosynthesis that it can. So, uh, yeah, that's just my thoughts. Um, now I need to figure out how to get that comment off. Figured it out. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to just being me. I've been treating them, um, but the tool that I would highly recommend if you feel like you might have these mites, if you are questioning it, a lot of people are still like, well, I don't see anything. And I'm, I'm telling you, like flat out, and everyone else who's dealt with these will tell you, you cannot see them with your eyes. These are not spider mites. They're not your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. They are evil and they are so microscopic that it is, it's it's almost unbelievable to me how tiny these things are. And I don't know where I got them. And I'm sure that there's lots of sellers and growers out there that have received them. Um, or people have received cuttings or plants from them. And I personally probably sent cuttings to people when I didn't know I had them. Uh and given them mites too. So I hate to think about that, but it just feels like we were all just passing around for the longest time. And finally people are kind of recognizing what they are. So anyway, this is, again, there's a link in the description, but this is a handheld wireless, which I mean, you, you can choose what you want. There's, um, I'm going to try to turn it on so you can see that the led lights, it might be dead. She gets used. I think it's dead. 
But I got the wireless ones. I connect this to my Wi-Fi through this app, and uh, then I can watch what this outputs from my phone. There are wired versions, but you kind of have to carry around your iPad or your laptop with you. Uh, whereas this, you know, you just take your cell phone and the, the microscope and you can set up a little station. I usually do it on my living room floor and I bring a plant over and I completely go over it. But this thing is really handy um, and it's hard to get used to because it's, again, a microscope. So it's a little bit shaky, but it does work. There are jeweler's loops as well that you could buy that are, I would highly recommend higher than 10 times um, magnification. Um, that would help help you see if there's any issues with your plant as well. So there's lots, lots of different ways, you know, what works for me may not work for you, but that's a really good tool to use to, to recognize them and to see them. And also every single plant, every cutting, even it comes from my bestest friend ever, that comes into this house gets a full on inspection with this baby before it gets anywhere near the gen pop because, Oh, the light did come on. See, it's a nice little led light. Um, because I'm not dealing with this stuff again. Um, another thing that I've done is I've used beneficial insects. I did see a couple comments about beneficial insects. Oh my gosh. I see a bunch of laughing, but I don't know. It's hard to not. <laughs> oh, amen. Uh, but <clears throat> I have used beneficial mites and I do like them. I use nature's good guys. You might even see in some of my videos that I have like little mite packets on my plants that sit behind me. The thing with beneficial mites, especially with these, is you really need to knock the population down before you integrate beneficial mites. Beneficial mites are wonderful pest prevention and yeah, you can treat them, but you really should knock the population down. In my opinion, you should knock the population down before you start integrating uh, beneficial mites. And that's what I did. So I did my first uh, sulfur treatment and um, after a couple weeks of that, I did beneficial mites. And I did that for four months and I wasn't spraying sulfur on those plants because I didn't want to kill the mites. But then I also felt like the mites didn't really have much to eat. So they were probably just cannibalizing themselves, which makes me sad. But um, after realizing that some of my plants still had those flat mites, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to stop the, the beneficials for a bit and I'm just going to go for the sulfur treatment for a while. And then after that is done, I'll add in beneficials again just to be there as a protector. And I think that's probably the best thing I can do um, and the best thing you can do as well. But uh, one thing I did want to say about the sulfur is that if you've treated your plant with an oil-based uh, spray, I mean, you guys need to read the instructions because I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not like the information master. But if you've treated it with an oil base like neem oil or something like that, the sulfur does react pretty badly with that and you will burn your foliage. So maybe do a little test if you've treated with like an oil type uh, product. Um, I think after a week they said you could start applying sulfur, but again, all the information is out there somewhere. So you can go find it. Um, ooh, and I do see Becca just said, Hi, friend. Has anyone seen these mites on any other plants than Hoya? And, you know, most of my collection is Hoya. Um, you know, I have my white wizard, like, right here next. I'm just going to get it. My white wizard is right here next to, like, all my Hoya. And I've inspected this like crazy, and I don't see them on there. I don't know what it is. Maybe they just really like Hoya. I mean, I get it. So do I. Um. But I am curious to know if anyone else has seen them on uh, things other than Hoya because, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm checking over all my plants with this dang microscope, but I've really only seen them on Hoya. Um, you know, like I said, they're setting up that live, laugh, love sign and uh, making a home. Um, what else did I want to say about these mites? The sulfur treatment. I think I pretty much have it. Um... 
like I said, there are other there are other ways. There's like Avid, um, Azamax, like all of these other miticides that do work, and they people have recommended them for Hoyas. It's just me personally. I don't really want to bring in um, chemicals to treat my plants, even though sulfur fungicide could be considered a chemical, but it's a natural pesticide, and I feel more comfortable using that. I have cats. Although they don't get into my plants, I just don't want to have a, an issue with using harsh chemicals. So I tend to avoid those. But there are definitely harsh chemicals out there that will help you rid yourself of these mites if you have them. Also, sorry, that's my cat's automatic feeder. It's going to go off one more time for the other cat, so sorry. <laughs> um Anyway, so that's why I use sulfur. That's why I haven't used those other things. But I did want to point you guys to something I put down in the description. There is a journal, a Hoya journal called Stemma. Um, and I have recently been reading a lot of different Hoya journals from back in the 80s and the 90s, which is really fun. It's, it's truly fascinating thinking about times where we didn't have things like this. We didn't have the internet to go to. We didn't have a computer in the palm of our hand that can give us information immediately people and collectors were creating these newsletters and Ted Green um, and Dale Kloppenberg had one called Fraterna which has been really really fun to read um, there was Christine Burton had one called the Hoyan the Swedish Hoya Society which I recently joined has a, a quarterly newsletter still that they send out in print um, but Stemma was also a Hoya journal that was uh, released, I don't want to say back in the day, I think the first issue was like 2007. So it's definitely the newer of all of the ones I just listed, but there's been a resurgence with Stemma. Um, I put the first journal in the description in a Google drive so you can download it, but it has a really great article about flat mites by Rebecca Lane. And she talks about ways you can treat them, gives you a lot of information on the flat mites themselves. It was a very well thought out and written article uh, but there's also a Facebook group. And the reason I included it here was because I know that not everyone has Facebook. But there is a Facebook group um, called Stemma that you can join. And when they publish the articles, you'll find it there. So this one I pulled from that uh, Facebook group. Um, but these journals and these newsletters, and they have so much good information. So I did want to point you guys there to that article because it was really helpful for me. Um, to read more about these mites and their life cycle and the fact that they stay around for 21 days. <laughs> 21 days. Oh my gosh, did I miss... I missed some more super chats. I gotta get different music on here, people. Ooh. Or I can do this. I hope that's not blasting your ear bubbles. Earballs, earbuds. <laughs> I also can do fun things like this. Hey, hey everybody. everybody. It's, it's me, me, a flat, flat mite, and, and I'm just munching on some Hoya. Anyway, uh, let's go into a Q&A so I can stay a little more um, present in the chat because I feel like I've missed so much. But thank you all for being here and thank you all for, for chatting. But if you have any specific questions, if you could put a Q in front of it so I can recognize it right away. I can pop it up on the screen and we can chat about it. Um, but yeah. Um, I would also highly recommend that you search out those Hoya articles because they're just really fun to read. Like uh, Fraterna in, in particular was really fun for me because they included photos of like these groups and it was a bunch of like older women and men in like the 90s who were all collecting Hoya. And now we are... Now we're doing things like YouTube videos and such, but that was that was their YouTube video. That was their way of sending information and talking to other growers and other people who really loved Hoya, and that's how they connected. So um, I did find Fraterna through some scanned documents on some like the New York Botanical Garden or New York Library has um, the scanned versions of them. Uh, so just search them out online and you'll be able to find them. They're really fun to read. I mean, some of them get really scientific-y. That's not even a word, but I'm going to say it. Uh, and yeah, I would highly suggest it. But anyway, um, okay, I see some questions rolling in since it's, an, it's enough. Uh, the lag caught up. 
Cortland, my friend from Instagram, was the hot water effective for you? Uh, no, it was not. And I did it at 120 degrees for 20 minutes. Like I, I maxed it out and I still had found mites weeks later on those Hoya. Um, so maybe it's effective at killing the adults right away, but maybe it's not as effective as killing the eggs. That's the, that's the tough part here is killing the eggs. Um, so it wasn't effective for me. I don't want other people to screw up their collections, uh, on because of advice that I gave. Um, and look, there's lots of scientific journals that talk about hot water baths and how they're good. Uh, so I don't think anyone was being reckless with giving that information. I just, if you're going to try it, just do it with something you don't love and just do it with one plant and see how it hap what happens to that plant, like over a week or two weeks before you go all in and go gangbusters on your entire collection because I don't want you to lose all your plants. Um, this from Dave and Meredith Burke or Berkey. Uh, could you do sulfur as a preventative? Yeah, sulfur was used as a pesticide for years before we have all these chemicals that are targeted to, to treat certain pests, um, especially in agriculture and such. But the thing with sulfur is that it does kill beneficials um, and not just beneficial mites that you release or predatory mites, but like beneficials out in nature, pollinators, that kind of stuff. So it's people have stopped using it. Um, and I'm not spraying my plants outside. I'm spraying them inside just to protect the chance. But you could definitely use it as a preventative. And I think it works as an insecticide for many different pests, not just the mites. Um, oh, and Jose, you had the same question. So um, here's another one. My Hoya imperalis all of a sudden has curling leaves and some yellow spotting. I've never had this on any of my Hoya. Could this be a sign of flat mites? Yes. I forget to tell you guys, like the curling leaves, the disformed leaves is another sign of these mites. So like I said, your Hoya will still grow, but if the mites have injected their poison or what have you into the, the growing leaf, it kind of gets all like curly and disformed. Um, the yellow spotting also makes me think that, yeah, possibly. Um, so Hannah, just, if you haven't bought that microscope and you don't have to buy it from me, like I'm, I don't know if Best Buy has it. I included an Amazon link because it's easy and that's where I bought it. And I'm showing you exactly what I bought, but you don't have to get the one I got. You don't have to buy it from my link. Um, but I do suggest you buy it because it will be, it'll be nice for you to know but that does seem like it would be signs of the flat mites um hi Lowney. Lowney. see all these people i recognize from instagram but i don't know if that's how you pronounce their names but anyway have you how many nightmares have you do you get about mites crawling all over you i don't really remember my dreams so i don't really i haven't really had a nightmare um Sue asked, what do affected leaves slash plants look like? I think we kind of answered this. The leaves kind of get a little curly. Now, obviously, your older leaves that were already there before the mites aren't going to curl up. Um, but the newer growing leaves will come out kind of a wonky and curly. And you know, my... Well, I can't see it. It's right there. My Obavada splash that I love. Um, so I kind of think that was maybe like patient zero, but the leaves were really curly and I was like, okay, well this might be a nitrogen deficiency. It wasn't. Also another sign is scarring on the back of your leaves. I know we all have had Hoya that kind of get like this weird scarring and almost looks like bark on the back of the leaves. And for the longest time in all the Facebook groups, like years ago, two years ago, people would be like, Oh, is this anything to worry about? And everybody, literally everybody was saying, no, it's nothing to worry about. Maybe that plant was overwatered and the cells blasted and it's scarred over. That scarring is from mites. I mean, I'm not going to say that all scarring on Hoya is from mites, but yeah. So look at the back of the leaves. If you see some like brown barky type stuff, give that an inspection. Um, Sam said neem application did not help. I'm not a fan of neem. I'm not saying it doesn't work for pests. I just feel like for an active infestation, neem isn't the best. It just 
to me, neem feels like it's a deterrent. It's a stay away. This isn't a homely place where you can hang your live, laugh, love sign, uh, but not to control an active infestation. Um, telltale signs other than nubby Hoya, um, Hoya that aren't growing. I honestly, guys, I don't, I don't think I'm doing anything special, but I can take a cutting of a Hoya, a two leaf cutting. I can put it in my De La Tank soil. I can put it in my prop box in a week. I can see roots. Um, and in two weeks, I can usually see a new vine starting. If you've had a Hoya for like a month and you've given it, you know, consistent water, if you've given it great lighting and it hasn't put out a new vine, mites. Well, possibly. <laughs> um, this one says, all of my mites recently have these little mites in the pond soil edge of pot. They're fleshy orange, size of a pinhead, and you can see them with my eyes. Doesn't seem to be doing any harm. Any idea? I get these two springtails. Well, the ones I get are in, are called springtails. Well, no, they're not called spring. They are springtails. And you can tell because they're kind of jumpy and jittery and they spring. Um, and springtails do some good. So I usually, I mean, I do rinse them out because when I change my nutrient solution, I have to. But um, they're not detrimental to your plant at all. Sorry, I'm slowly making my way. What fertilizer do you use? Brandy, I use the three-step nutrients by General Hydroponics, and I pH balance my water. I'm hoping to do one of these lives about a LECA or Passive Hydro Q&A because a lot of people are always curious on what, what I'm doing, um, and I don't know if it's because they think my plants grow really fast. I mean, they seem to grow fast, So, but pH balancing your water is very important because... Um, Plants can only uptake nutrients at a certain pH level. Like they may only take nitrogen if the pH is five. And a lot of the times if you get water from your tap, you add the nutrient solution, the pH might be like at seven. So you're basically just starving that plant of that nutrient. And I know it can be a hassle, but once you start doing it, once you get down a system, it's super easy and your plants will love you. I, I guarantee it. Um... Any other questions? Do all Hoyas have the same texture? Example, firm, not. Um, I don't know what you're saying here, but the, there's a vast, a myriad of different Hoya species that all have different textures. You have thin leafed like the Bella or the Imperalis, and you have very thick, coarse leaves like the Obavada. Well, not coarse, but just thick, succulent leaves. And you have other very flat but very leathery leaved Hoya. So, I mean, there's just a bunch. Um, this question by Deborah. Hi, Deborah. I, rec I recognize you uh, from your comments on my videos. So, thank you. Uh, but um, she asks Are they in soil? To my knowledge, no. I don't think that they would survive in soil, but I don't really have any soil plants. Most of mine are inorganic, medium. Um, but I don't, I don't believe that they stick around in soil because I don't think they're getting much nutrients there. <clears throat> ah, Zanizana, my Australian babe. Uh, <laughs> um, this can be a little tricky. So you have your microscope and it's got a little focus wheel here. So what I did was I made a map. And this is my nerd brain and how I like to work smarter, not harder, but I made a map with a cross on it and gave each point a number. And then I put this down on it so I could tell which way I should hold it. So whenever I move it, it moves with how I want it to because how you would normally hold this in your hand, it's kind of opposite. It's, it's almost like trying to give yourself a haircut in a mirror. It's it's a hassle. Um, so that's what I did. That's my little pro tip for the microscope. Um, and it worked well. So now I know exactly how I need to hold it in my hand to make sure where I move it up, it's actually moving up on the plant and I can see it. Um, A sapphire. I have some Hoyas that grow sets of leaves, but one grows and other yellows. Would that be mites? Uh, not necessarily. I have my Hoya lacanosa punsac. Well, 
okay, my shelves are overexposed because of the grow light, so you can't really see it. But that one tends to put out leaves and 50 to 60% of them turn yellow after they've grown like quite big um, and fall off. And I've, oh, I've inspected that thing like crazy with this microscope. And uh, no, there were no mites on it. So um, I don't know how to help you with that. Sometimes the yellowing leaves mean overwatering. I mean, it's one of those things where like, oh, it's not getting enough light. It's getting too much light. You're not giving enough water. You're giving it too much water. It's just, it's, it's annoying. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have the mites, but it might be good to get to check them over. Uh, seven, one, one, make seven up yours. Seven, no, that wasn't seven eleven. That was seven up. Sorry. I tend to get a fast, clear looking mites on Hoya and terracotta. They're usually on the outside of the terracotta, occasionally on the leaves, but barely. Have you seen these? They seem harmless. Uh, I, I saw someone a long time ago in the chat say fast is friend, slow is foe. And that's a pretty good rule. If the if the bugs are moving fast, chances are they're not harmful. Um, there are things like soil mites, uh, springtails that I do regularly see in my plants. And sometimes those can be harmful, but most of the time they just do good. They eat uh, rotting organic material. Um, maybe if you had some roots, because everyone deals with root rot. It's not meaning like you're going to have root rot even if you have a healthy plant. Like roots just kind of do that sometimes. Um, and they eat those. So uh, if it's fast, usually it's a friend. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I kind of, I mentioned this earlier. I know that people probably trickle in on this live, but they do prefer to be around new growth. Again, that's why um, the Swedish Hoya people call, told me they call them top shoot mites because they are at the top, the fleshy part of the growth. Um, and if you have a new vine growing down at the base of your plant, because we all know that Hoya do that all the time, they would be down there. So I'm not saying to just look at the tops of your plants, but like anywhere there's new growth and they're usually on the stem, on the petiole there. You I did rarely see them on leaves. So, um, that's where you should be checking. Um, any other questions? I have a hoyadakia that has black spots and the leaves turn yellow and fall off. Fungus issue? Um, I do not know. Um, my dakia was covered in these mites and it also had that scarring on the back of them. So that should have been my sign. But again, I thought that that was just, you know, normal scarring on a um, hoya. I would say that if the leaf of your Hoya is, is kind of developing like a yellow ring, like a black spot when then the, a yellow ring, it could be a fungal issue. Um, and you honestly, the sulfur is a fungicide too. So, you know, two birds, one stone, spray your plant with sulfur and, uh, kill the mites. And if there's a fungus, kill it. I've never really dealt with fungal issues on my plants, So I'm not really a great, uh, information source for fungal issues. Um, so I apologize for that. Have you tried using a soft toothbrush and doing a soapy bath before using sulfur? I haven't. Um, I do use a soft bristle toothbrush. And if I take cuttings, so like the cuttings of my big Hoya that I had to throw away, I took cuttings and I dunked them in a tub. Well, not a bathtub, but like a plastic tub with the sulfur fungicide and water and use a soft bristle toothbrush and just scrubbed. Please wear protection, safety gear, wear gloves. Skin is your biggest organ on your body and our skin absorbs so much. So when you're dealing with chemicals and sulfur and all of that stuff, wear gloves because you just don't want, you just don't know what that can be doing. So, um, pro tip, well, not pro tip, just be safe. Uh, most of the insecticides have a safety data sheet. They kind of tell you all of that stuff, but protect yourself, protect your skin. Um, the soapy bath probably would work. I just, I wanted to bring in the big guns. Um, have you noticed them messing with the blooms or the dunks? Uh, I have not. I And I have quite a few Hoyas that bloom, and I really get up in there with this microscope because I kind of like watching them develop. So like every day I'll kind of look and see how it's progressed and watch um, 
watch how the bloom grows because I'm a nerd. Uh, and I have never really noticed um, the mites on the blooms. But that's not to say that they wouldn't be there because they still might. I just haven't noticed them. Um, here's another one. Also, guys, I'm going to end this probably after an hour. So in about five minutes, I just want to let you know. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I want people to be able to watch this. And I know sometimes if you have a live for like two hours, people get a little finicky about it. But anyway, uh, I'm fighting with root mealies now. Does soap solution work to kill them or the hot water method is better? Does it work with mites too? So the, the, when I first stumbled across the hot water baths, it was for root mealies specifically, but there is a product called Pure Crop One. Um, my friend Lydia uses it for her root mealy, or well, she didn't have root mealies. She was afraid she had them. But my other friend Jesse did have them, and they've used Pure Crop One as a soil drench, or those two ladies grow in hydro like me. Um, so they kind of just use it in their cash po, and it took care of the root mealies. So uh, look up Pure Crop One. I hope you're from the U.S. and you can get it there. Um, oh, I see another super chat. Guys, <laughs> super chat. I'll use this little dance to go through the comments. I know that people probably feel itchy uh, talking about these mites, but no. I mean, yes, you have mites on you. All of us have mites on us. If you looked at your skin under a microscope, you have tiny microscopic mites just... All up in there, people. Um, any other questions? Have you found them on more, more uncertain? Sorry, I guess I should just put it up instead of reading it. Have you found them on more? Have you found them <laughs> more on certain types of oils? I need to have a drink. You know, I haven't noticed a pattern. I really thought that my Bella would be covered in them, and it it wasn't. I have treated it just in case. Uh, because spider mites love the Bella. They love those thin-leafed Hoya. And, you know, and I, for the longest time, was like, oh, I can't have mites on my Hoya because they don't like them. But <laughs> those flat mites, they sure did show me. But I don't think they really distinguish. As long as there's something to munch, they're going to be there munching. What? <laughs> I think that meant to say what pH, but I was like, what Harry Potter level? I'm like, what level am I? Uh pH level do you recommend for oil? I, whenever I make my nutrient solution, I make sure it's at pH five because as, uh, and that's slightly acidic, I think, as your plants take up nutrient and exchange, um, that a pH level, slight that number goes higher. So when I have nutrient solution in my cash pot, when I first fill it, I keep it at five. And if I test that in like three or four days or even a week later, it'll probably be up near seven and so between five and seven really captures all of the different levels or intervals of nutrients that uptake at certain levels there's diagrams out there that show you what nutrients are uptake uptake uptook that are used by the plant and what ph level is the most uh ideal and five to seven kind of covers that so i started out at five long-winded answer started out five and then go to um, and then it slightly gets more neutral. And then when I refresh, I refresh it at five. Um, I don't know. 7-Eleven, I don't know what this is. Maybe someone else has already answered this. I also get another mite-looking creature, possibly a root mite, round body, small head, very black. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Um my biggest fear is to just like sit here and not have any answers. And I hope you guys understand that. Uh, I am definitely not an expert in any of this. Is there a reason why I would have mites for months without knowing and very few have mite damage? Are they attracted to certain plants rather than others? I don't, I honestly don't know. I feel like the mites can travel pretty quickly, but I don't know why uh, all of a sudden you would. Yeah. I don't know, because I probably had them for a long time, too, without even knowing, and ugh, I hate them. I hate them. Um, the plant you showed is a philodendron white knight. Nope, that was my white wizard, my beautiful white wizard, but 
I'm trying, I, I've tried to rehome it because I have multiple cuttings of that growing and um, I just can't ship it. So nobody locally wants it. Um, anything else? Should I spray sulfur in my bathroom instead of my living room? Should I open the windows? I honestly don't know. I put a mask on because the powder does kind of like put off some dust, almost like perlite. I didn't want to breathe it in and I put my gloves on, but I didn't really have an issue. I don't know. It doesn't smell terrible. It definitely doesn't smell as bad as when you treat your plants with rubbing alcohol because that made me a little woozy, but the sulfur um, didn't bother me too much. Um, just going through, sorry, this, this is like, maybe we should do a little dance while I'm reading these. <laughs> okay. I don't see any more questions. Um, thank you guys all for all the thumbs ups. Like that's really kind of you and it really helps push this out. I'm going to save this live, uh, for others who aren't able to make it because I know over in the UK and such, it's like 2 a.m., um, but, uh, yeah, that's been my journey with the mites. It's been not fun. I'm going to go and take the Q and a off. Uh, Oh, we got another Q Lynn. How long did you leave the sulfur on? I'm leaving it on quite a few days. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm testing the waters. I might leave it on five days, rinse it off, spray again after two days of it being rinsed off. Um, but yeah. Oh, friends, I'm really sorry if you have had to deal with these mites. And I know that a, a lot of people are coming to a reckoning with their collection. And it's just, it's not fun. It's not fun for anybody, especially um, your beautiful Hoya that possibly have them. But take heart. There is hope. You can, you can regain control of your collection. It just takes a little elbow grease, a little time, a little frustration, a little hair pulling, and, uh, but you'll get there. And that's where I am right now. Um, slowly we're making progress. Things are still growing. Things are still happy, but, uh, it's not going to be a forever thing, but you do need to make sure that you keep regular on your treatments, at least until the life cycle is finished. So five to six weeks of spraying weekly with sulfur and yeah, that should be it. That, that should, uh, that should do it. Hopefully. And I, I have had people tell me they just treated once with sulfur and they already see new growth. So I know it's working. Um, and if sulfur isn't your way, seriously, go in the description, read that Stemma journal. There's lists of different pesticides, mites, mites and such that you can use. Um, and hopefully that'll help you. But also read that journal because it's really fun. Like these Hoya journals are so cool. So, and, well, at least for me, a big nerd. Um, but thank you all for joining this live. I loved it. I had so much fun. I really wish I could keep up with the comments. So I'm really sorry if I missed you, but it was really great seeing some familiar names in there from my videos and friends that joined Pam. I didn't even say hi to you, but I've seen you in the comments. So hi, Pam. Um, so, uh, I hope to do this more, maybe with other topics, maybe just for funsies. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye, friends.